Hey guys, Julia here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm moving into a brand new bullet journal. Always super exciting. I was able to fit January and February in my last journal. So I'm getting this one all set up and ready to go for March. I love moving into new journals at like not typical times of the year because it shows that you can just really start at any time. But let's check out the journal I'll be using for the rest of the year. Here she is voted on by my lovely collection crew over on Patreon. This is an Archer and Olive B5 linen dot grid notebook with a stunning, stunning cover design. It comes with all the comforts I know and love, 160 GSM bright white paper, pin loop, elastic closure, pocket in the back, all of that. And I really like this color. I This is actually my sixth bullet journal I want to say and none of them even come close to this color so I'm excited about that and so we're gonna break her in and decorate the inside cover a bit starting with the key I'm drawing an actual key here using hands down my favorite gold marker by pilot I'll leave links down in the description but gotta shout out this marker always and forever because it's just that good promise <laughs> but if you saw my mini 2022 setup in my last journal these little blobby things will look familiar but this time around i'm changing up the color story to match the journal's cover i just think that's a nice touch to match the journal and sort of separate and signal those yearly spreads versus those monthly ones and now I'm just writing in my key. And this is actually like mostly for future Julia, like way in the future Julia, when I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> For the name section, I've cut a little piece of navy dot grid paper and I'm writing my name in with that same gold marker again. I started to color it in with an Archer and Olive metallic acrylograph, but it just wasn't giving me the same smoothness and coverage, I guess. So I ended up going back to that gold marker. Okay, and then down below, I'll put my phone number and email address in the absolute horrific event. I leave my journal somewhere and someone finds it. You would think that's unlikely, but I've also lost my phone in a Polish airport. Long story, not gonna go there, but yeah, here's the inside cover. Okay, the next step is to banish this first page since it doesn't even open all the way and I'm just doing that with a permanent glue stick, love that thing. And then we're on to the quote page, which is actually a play on the quote page I set up back in December. But I've changed the quote just a little bit this time to say, the next chapter is now. And I'm pretty much going for the same style lettering as that last 2022 setup. Okay, so the large serif lettering I'm using throughout the setup is based on a font called Acta Display. And serif lettering for me is always kind of a challenge, but it's also super fun at the same time. I feel like the more I do it, the more I sort of like understand how the letters are put together better, if that makes sense. But yeah, some diddly doos, some washi, and there's basically the quote page. Oh yeah, and there's sparkles. Of course there's sparkles. Sorry, I'm just back on it. I've held back for far too long. And so the sparkles had to come back. Don't judge me. So for the cover page, I'm keeping things pretty centralized since the quote page is a lot visually. And I wanna offset that just a bit. 
But yeah, if you've seen my last setup, you know I sort of did a start demo page here and didn't really go all out with the whole 2022 written out like this. So of course this time around, I'm throwing in 2022 in there because here we go. We are committing to the fact that it is indeed a new year. Next up is the photo spread and I'm just drawing in some Polaroids here, the same size as, well, a Polaroid. And I'm taping those off because I will be doing some painting on the insides of them. And I'm pretty sure this is my third time doing a spread like this. And every time I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna color the inside of these Polaroids because who cares? You won't even see this whenever they're all covered up with a Polaroid. So yeah, but here we are, here we are. We're gonna do it again. I'm using a deep blue gouache this time to keep within this monochromatic blue situation. It was kind of weird, but I had to go over this of a couple of times to get a nice solid color. And when it was drying, it kind of peeled up and kind of flaked. It was kind of strange, but I, I just rolled with it. But while it's all drying, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the usual decorations around the borders. I didn't really wanna do a header for this page because it's pretty obvious what this is. So yeah, no header this time around. Once the paint is all dry, you'll basically see the magic of this gold pen, like goes over the paint like a freaking champ. I'm gonna get the washi tape out of here and then just add in those finishing touches. I actually started laughing to myself when this was all coming together because it reminds me of that Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake matching denim look for the VMAs in like the early 2000s. I'll pop that on the screen if I can, if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, you won't be able to unsee it now. So you're welcome. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's a whole other part to this section. So November and December will live back here and then the right side of the page will be where some extra photos and printouts will go because some months there are just way more than one photo that I wanna use and show off. And yeah, I like the look of having some other photos in the spread last year. So I'm gonna do that again here but I'm extra and I'm just decorating this box where the photos will go so it doesn't look all blank in the meantime. And then of course I'm adding some sparkles down in the corners and all around really is what it's gonna come down to. But I am gonna go in with the blobs and I did play with the blobs going in front of and behind the box to give the spread a little more depth. Uh, yeah, lots of sparkles, lots of washi. So that means for me that the next page will have to dial it back a bit, which is fine because it's the beginning of the future log. 
And for this, the header is definitely a play on the cover page. Same layout to sort of tie that in. I'm using those dotted lines, the script and serif lettering pair, those interior like light blue lines, which also kind of goes really well with the photos on the left page. And yeah, can you tell that I'm a graphic designer and I think about layout too damn much? <laughs> But for the calendars, I'm using my 2022 mini calendar stickers. You can write and color on these and they save a ton of time when setting up these mini calendars or habit trackers. They will be linked down in the description as well if you wanna grab some for yourself. But as you can see, it's as simple as plopping them in there, adding in some headers, April, May, June, bam, 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 and there's the spread. Flipping over, it's the same story. I'm finishing up the future log and I honestly don't mind having this take up, what, three pages because I use the future log super heavily and I already know that I'll need all the space I can get with this thing. If you're thinking about starting a bullet journal and literally have no idea what this is, this is basically your year at a glance. You can put down any events, meetings, I do birthdays here too, and then month by month, you pull the information from here into your monthly or weekly planning spreads. Down below here, I'm venturing into 2023, and this section being this large has been a slow progression, but I need it, especially when it gets closer to the end of the year and dates start trickling into the next year. I like to have a place to put those dates, and so I have the first six months of 2023 in here, no calendar, no frills, just purely functional and a spot to put things that pop up. Also lost some footage here, but you didn't miss much. I just didn't like the 2023 header, so I changed that up and added some washi tape. But moving on, I'm giving my 2022 focus area a whole page this time around because something's missing in this setup. Oh, the logo folio. I made another uh, sort of business project design notebook basically, and I've decided to move the logo folio over there. But I'm using that extra space to go really large on the header, and I'm definitely obsessed with how this turned out. I tried to give it an italics sort of look, and on purpose didn't do any crazy doodles or anything around it because it's a focus thing, and so it just, it just made sense. I'm actually reevaluating my focus areas and the categories themselves are quite similar. I'm doing health, work, art, and the new one here is going to be future moves. And overall, the things I'm putting in these boxes are going to be action driven. Like instead of writing improving my lettering, for example, I'll instead put take five lettering classes or something like that. The future section is related to sort of prepping myself for things that I know I want to do in the future. Like I know I want to be an expat, for example, so maybe seeking out specific resources would be something that would go in that box. Still sort of workshopping that one. This write page is quick and easy and I'm offsetting the white of the focus page with lots of doodles here, but this is in function like a wide open area to just jot down things to check out. This could be books, movies, places, just things people sort of recommend on the fly. And then same with the section below, just those spur of the moment ideas, shower thoughts that I just don't wanna forget about. And let's get into the last spread of the setup. The first section is my travel tracker diary thing. And here is where I sort of keep track of like overnight trips, 
whether that be work ones or fun ones. But I have three lines within the table where I write in where we went, the dates and the purpose. And then there's a little area to the left where I doodle in the flag because I like flags, design nerd and all. So yeah, of course. Oh, you guys look at this marker. I recently got it, have not used it except for in the setup and the tip is already pretty raggedy. So no bueno. I don't know how to say the brand, but it's something like, uh, like Brunzing. I don't know. Brunizel. I don't, I'm sorry for butchering that all together, but I am still using it for my, when did I last tracker where I'll keep up with mostly cleaning things and maintenance tasks that don't happen as often, oil changes, cleaning the car, etc. I absolutely was not vibing with the header for that, so I will come back and change that. But in the meantime, I'm moving on to my period tracker, which pretty self-explanatory here. I'm using those calendar stickers once again because they've spoiled me and down at the bottom, I'm doodling in a couple of menstrual cups. And I think maybe this is tracker number three with cup doodles. And this is all the practice I get drawing them and they just keep getting better and better, which is also hilarious. But yeah, they get their own little sparkle and I'm going to add in some washi tape, of course, and then fix that header which I don't have the footage for either, but same thing, navy paper, gold pen, and fixed. But yeah, let's take one last look at all of my denim -y spreads all together. I'm excited about how this turned out. Not a typical setup color for me, but I do love it. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. A special thanks to my fabulous patrons, and I'll catch you guys in the next one where I'll be setting up my March bullet journal spreads. See you there. If you like this video, here are a couple more I think you would enjoy.